This is your welcome video to Photoshop. Um, I'm your instructor, Margaret Kelly. Um, it'll be all online. And we're going to go through how your stuff is posted, how you access it. Um, but before we do, I want to show this little video to you to get you excited about Photoshop. Um, my experience has been as a graphic designer uh, for approximately 40 years. I have taught at Specs Howard School of Media Arts full time for eight years and I'm teaching here because my husband and I moved further north. So I'm teaching here at Henry Ford College. So welcome. Um, and let's take a look at this video before we start the class, okay? How can we learn from the past? It is a story that Americans are challenged with all the time. It's haunting, cruel, tragic, threatening, shocking, unbelievable, evil, illogical, xenophobic, genocidal, danger, death. But that's not all there is to this story. That looks good. But that was an ad. The word Photoshop is often used like, oh, you can just Photoshop that with a click of a button. And it's not true. It's really not true. Photoshop is such an amazing tool. It changed the whole photography world. Online culture would be a lot more boring if there weren't editing tools like Photoshop. people feel that because you pass some work through Photoshop or digital, the process is not as valid that it's going to be with a click of a button, which is a big misconception. I feel like I do draw traditionally, but I just do it on the computer. Photoshop, there's nothing you can't create with it, especially nowadays. It's just like learning any program. I feel it's definitely important to experiment for yourself. Just go crazy with it. I think a lot of my work is fantasy, but photorealistic. It's that floating world image, and people seem to be drawn to that. Usually a production company or advertising company would approach me, and they would give me one or two images to work with as a start. With the Paul McCartney one, it was just him on a stage in a black background, so I would have to take him and make an interesting illustration with it. I'd say typically 50 layers is normal, if not more. I'd say that would be the base. It's not just layers of random elements. You gotta have color, color balancing, and then you have to adjust levels. Just everything and anything could be a layer. 10, 15 years ago, I definitely wouldn't be able to create images like what I do today. I've talked to traditional artists before, and a lot of them were just kind of stubborn in trying it, or they feel like there would be a cop-out if they do, and I don't agree with that. It's really no different than a regular traditional brush. It's just how you want to use it. Before the digital age, we used to retouch prints, nags, ectachromes. Everything was made with hands. Now, everything can be photoshopped. So, editors, they put a lot of work on the post-production. The first thing is I start with a basic shaping. Make sure the body, face, the hair, the finger, the hands, the feet looks pretty good to the eye. Then I work my way in to do some details in the skin, blotches, zits, bags and wrinkles, red eyes, crossing fine hairs. I mean, I can go on and on. A good retouching job, obviously, is when you don't see it retouched. There's still some quality into it, some luminosity, some shadow, it's still alive. But this is a cycle Photoshop disaster. People are just retouching without the eye of the retoucher or the eye of the photographer. There's poor quality. You don't have any structure left. We're really bombarded with pictures of glamour and perfectness. It seems like perfection has to be the norm, and it's pretty sad. I do believe those images impact our definition of beauty, but the trend changes and the beauty keeps changing over time. There's a saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which I believe is true. I think we can separate between like the commercial beauty and the artistic beauty. Photoshop has evolved along with remix culture in a very interesting way. 
it's become a dominant way to be able to illustrate their sense of humor or what they find is funny, what their ethics are. And images are much easier to spread than a blog post. Sometimes Photoshop memes can be a very simple way of communicating, but other times I think they can be quite deep and complicated. Casually Pepper Spray Cop, for example, was a meme that originated from this photograph of a police officer who was pepper spraying some occupied protesters on campus. And a lot of people use this meme to make a statement about police brutality or to publicly humiliate Lieutenant John Pike. There's a really recent Photoshop meme called Thumbs and Ammo, in which movie stills having an actor holding a gun has the gun replaced with a thumbs up hand signal. And this one actually requires some very significant Photoshop abilities. And some people have said that it's a, an interesting way to make a statement about gun control or have an anti-gun sentiment. I'd say Photoshop has been empowering for people. It gives them the ability to humble celebrities like Beyonce's unflattering photos or politicians. And previously, people didn't really have such a way to get their voice heard in these regards. So these tools have really helped users to be able to interact with media and change it into whatever way they want. The benefit is obviously the practicalness. It's faster, it's cheaper, it's better and better all the time. Photoshop has become very important in terms of our visual culture, and meme culture is becoming increasingly important in online discourse. 10, 15 years ago, I definitely wouldn't be able to create images like what I do today. It's not possible. OK, just to get you excited about the software, um, those are just some of the things that you can do in it. Um, what we also do and what I mostly do with it is edit, edit the photos and you're going to learn um, retouch skills and things like that. But you also have a painting assignment. So let us go through the um, syllabus right now, just really quickly um, to show you what what we have going here um, in our class. OK. So. Um, our class runs from 9.15 to 12.18. And um, you're never attended date. So that means you have to um, participate in one of the forums or the assignment before um, Wednesday, December 28th. So that's a week from Wednesday. So you'll have time. Okay. Or you're going to be marked never attended. And that just has um, financial aid ramifications if you do have financial aid. So this provides an introductory level of digital imaging with Photoshop, including print, web, illustration, image enhancement, correction, and animation techniques, along with formatting, how to save a format for what particular function. Okay, um, so this is what your supplies are. Um, you need to have a binder, a dedicated notebook, um, a Facebook account for our virtual classroom where we post our work. And that's where you send your invitation to once you get your Facebook account up and running. And it's just a private group for our posting of work only, not anything else. Um, you need a flash drive, sketchbook, pencils, and Macron pens. Um, access to Zoom, and you must purchase the Photoshop software. Okay, so you just go to adobe.com, and then it says something like for education, and you get the student-priced software. Uh, for those of you who are also in graphic design, you've already bought the Creative Suite, so you should have Photoshop to download. Okay. Before you do, you have to make sure your computer can handle it. In the welcome letter, there's a link that you go to and it tells you how much memory you need to have on your computer to run the software. There are a thousand points in this class that you can earn from doing the exercises or the projects. Okay, uh, and the point accumulation can translate to grades, 900 to 1000 is an A, 800 to 898 is a B, a C is 700 to 798, and a D and an E are 600 and below. And this is what we're going to be doing, okay? Now, I'm also going to just really quickly in this video go through 
Moodle with you and how the Moodle is set up. Okay. So um, this week you're going to have an introduction to Photoshop. So we're going to go into the Photoshop workspace and um, you're going to start the first assignment, which is the marquee assignment. Next week, you're going to be using selection tools to learn how to make a selection. Okay. Oh, back up to week one. You're going to be learning about layers also. Layers are everything in Photoshop. Okay. So you're going to add layers and you're going to you learn about the, the Photoshop workspace. Um, week two, you're also going to use quick masks, adjustment layers, blend modes, layer masks, and effects. Okay, week three, we're gonna we're just gonna kind of go over the shortcuts that we're working with and the tools to just get you ready for this um, midterm worksheet that you're gonna do. Okay, um, we're gonna do a painting exercise. This is one of my most favorite exercises in Photoshop. We have some high res photographs that you're going to translate into a painting and. For each one of your assignments, there are some samples available so you see what we are expecting of you. Okay. Um, week four, you're going to learn about the type tool because you're going to be using that to create your website. You're going to be creating some website prototypes. Um, you're also going to do a photo composition by blending photos and using some of the techniques that you've learned in the early exercises uh, to create a photo composition. And then you're going to be working on your Photoshop um, website prototype for the rest of the term because you have three pages that you have to create and you're going to export the assets so that someone else can use it. And then the rest of the syllabus just talks about, you know, um, resources that have the, your, that are available to you and, you know, what the core objectives are, which was in the catalog. So you, we're going to learn the workspace, the selection tools, image restoration and correction. You're going to learn how to do retouching tools. Um, then you're going to be using layers, blending modes, adjustment layers to take it to the next level. And then we're going to introduce you very quickly to the animation process. And then Photoshop for web applications. Okay, so that is the syllabus. So, um, I'm going to go back. So this is how the Moodle is set up. Um, each week, you're going to have a group of readings, maybe a forum. Not too often do you have forums. Um, but I have it labeled pretty well. Um, I said, read the handout, read the handout. There's a video working with layers. Many of the handouts have videos to go with them. Okay. Um, the marquee tool, this is your first assignment. Here's the video to go with it. And then there's a handout. So you have to watch the video and read the handout for every assignment. Okay. Your first assignment is getting to know you. It's a forum. And... You have to introduce yourself and explain your why you're studying Photoshop or what you what your major is. And please share if you're working on a Mac or a PC. Why are you taking Photoshop? And respond to two peers. And that's only 15 points, but it adds up for your um, participation points. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over today is your Photoshop workspace. Okay. Um, once you buy the program, download it, and open it up, you're going to see that on top, when you open it up, is the Photoshop menu. You work with this and the tools, which are right here, and they should be on your left-hand side, um, to work within Photoshop. So here's the Photoshop menu. Then next in the application, once you have it open, is the tool option bar. And depending on the tool you use, the tool option bar will change. It's contextual. Okay, so it depends on which tool you use and it gives you more options for that tool. So if you pick the move tool or the marquee tool, which is the first tool, 
we're going to be working with, um, it changes up there depending on which tool you use. When you see these little triangles down here, that means there are more options for tools underneath that tool. So, and then you have your help. If you can't find something, type it in help and it'll show you where to go. Okay. Um, panels, you get your panels from going to the window and you pull it down and you do panels. Right now the history panel is open, but we're going to be working with layers and there's a video about layers. Um, you're going to learn about file formats and saving your project. Um, common formats for web usage are JPEG or PINGs. Common formats for print are ESP or EPS or TIFF, PSD or PDF. Um, many people do not have Photoshop. So if you're working with a client, sometimes they wouldn't be able to open it. So you'd need to um, create a PDF from your Photoshop file. A native Photoshop file is called a PSD, and those have the most information in them. Okay, so there's extensions. So PSD, JPEG, EPS, TIFF. PDF, those are all called extensions and those are at the end of your document and those designate the format that they are. There are different color spaces in Photoshop. When you're creating or editing images for the web, you wanna choose RGB. When creating or editing images for print, you wanna choose CMYK. So that's a rundown of the workspace and file formats and tools, okay? So, and that's a handout in Moodle for you. Um, next, we're gonna do working with layers and you can look at that video on your own. You also have a handout. Then we have a marquee tool. Um, this is your first assignment. And let's look at some samples to review. You are going to be grabbing the marquee and you'll see this in the video. I just wanted to show you some samples. Um, you're going to be grabbing the marquee, marquee tool and creating circles, squares, or rectangles or ovals and filling them with color. You're going to be using the paint bucket tool to fill them with color and you're creating a very pleasing composition. So what I want you to work with, I don't want you to create a picture. I know some of you are artists. I don't want you to create a picture. I want you to stick with the rectangles and the ovals and the circles. And I want you to create a pleasing composition, just working with the opacity in the layer panel, which you'll see in one of my videos that I have on Moodle and color. And you'll see how to apply the color to your composition. But this is your first assignment, okay? So you have the forum this week and this marquee assignment. So everything is on Moodle. Check out Moodle if you have any questions. Um, Please let me know. And have fun. Enjoy yourself. This is a very fun program. It's also exciting. And it can help you, um, no matter what your field of study is, do better with your visual communications. So welcome. Um, please email if you have any questions. mgkelly at hfcc.edu. Okay. And good luck. See you in the in Moodle.